a very demony outer spacey night. I'm Bill Worser. I'm Super DM64. Indeed he is. Dylan, today's the fucking Christmas special, dude. It's a motherfucking Christmas. It's a indeed. This is the Demons from Outer Space motherfucking Christmas, a holiday podcast by Bill Worcester and Dylan McCandless. Yes, because of our yes, our need for pretentious titles. <laughs> yes, we couldn't just be the the DFOS holiday special, which was the original intention. It had to be Demons from Outer Space motherfucking Christmas Mother- holiday podcast <laughs> by Bill Worcester and Dylan McCandless. It's kind of like Charles Dickens. Because I think that we are on the same level as Charles Dickens here. Naturally. Where, Naturally. you know, we explore the the idea of regret through our literary work. So it, while his was a a holiday horror tale, I believe it was it was subtitled, ours is a holiday podcast in which we discuss piss pants and the shitty specter and the gay ghost writer. Indeed. So we have ghosts too. The specter of of DFO, the specters of DFOS, <laughs> indeed, the ghosts of demons from outer space, past, present, and future. The future one is yet to be determined. So, Dylan, I actually want to start off on kind of a sequel note. Uh, this is the first sequel podcast we're going to be doing here at the DFOS because the last holiday special we did, which was about. Three or four episodes ago? What was it, episode four that one was? Mm, yes. We did our Thanksgiving special, which, honest to God, not much of a Thanksgiving special. Um, I mean, it's Thanksgiving, what's there to say? Oh. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's turkey and, and getting fat and, you know, burning houses down with ovens. Um, so instead, Bill wowed you all with the story of orca torture. Yes, indeed. We went on a massive orca torture trivia challenge, and... uh one of our high, I think, I believe it's our highest rated episode, actually. So that, apparently we did something right. Is that so? I think so, if I'm not mistaken. Um, the last couple episodes have really picked up. Like the first three were decent amount of views and decent amount of comments and stuff. The last, the the last like leg of them, amazing views. Like it's been, it's been equal to SOS, which I never expected we would get to. So thank you, thank you all for your support. Indeed. So. Dylan, this is going to be a sequel, because while last time we completely ignored the holiday and talked about something terrible, we're going to do the same exact thing this time, and it's going to be a direct sequel to that podcast, because in that podcast we talked about a documentary called Blackfish, and I told Dylan the story of Killer Whale Tillicum, and I told Dylan that he absolutely had to go out there and watch it. All these weeks later, all these podcasts later... Dylan has done it. Yes. Dylan, I finally you know, got around. I finally got around to watching Blackfish. And you maybe ask yourself, what was it that finally got you to go out there and see this documentary? And the answer is, they put it on Netflix, so it was free. Uh, <laughs> yes. And so once it became free, I was like, well, now nah, I gotta watch it. I was so pissed because I spent at least eighteen dollars to watch it on several different occasions, <laughs> and then like after I've kind of gone out of the phase. Here it is on Netflix for free. I'm like, fuck! I knew if I waited, it would probably pop up there. Oh. Yeah, it was only a matter of time, because it literally just hit, like, it literally just hit the public consciousness. So, Dylan, your thoughts on Blackfish? And I'm not going to talk about it for two hours, because I don't think there's much I can say about it beyond what you said. Um, excellent documentary. You know what I think the worst part is? Not, not really worst in terms of being the worst, but the one that just hit me the hardest, because I don't think I was prepared for it. Which one? Those god awful Sea World commercials from the eighties. Jesus Christ! <laughs> it is so bad, isn't it? Jesus Christ! The way they use them is so fucking effective because they literally just take it and put it in the context of these horrible fucking kill- killings and the way they treat the whales. It is so fucking it's funny. It's like com- we're gonna tell you a terrible, terrible story about orca torture and then follow it up with this goofy ass commercial from the eighties. I think the worst one is the one where it's like some family in like Georgia or something talking about how they recently went to SeaWorld and how much they enjoyed it. Yeah, and the father is like at least 20 years too old in order to fucking have those kids that age. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. The, the, Unless it's the daughter. To be the grand, that's not made clear. The daughter has the same dentist as the Angry Beavers, apparently, and the the, the, the dialogue, <laughs> the dialogue in the whole thing is just 
just painful. <laughs> and the and the fucking the fucking acting in that in that in that commercial where the kid is like, you know, when you get when you get up in those 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 in the front rows and Shamu jumps. Whammo! Whammo! You're a goner! And I was like, I want to do that to you, kid. Whammo! You're a goner! I don't think you could get an actor... I don't think you could get an actor good enough to make the dialogue sound good, but the the acting was quite painful as well. Um, that, I love the father who's just like, thanks a lot, Shamu, for bringing us to SeaWorld. It's now one of our favorite places. It literally looked like he was about to drop dead. No, the mom doesn't even say anything. Oh, yeah, she doesn't speak, does she? No. I mean, the the part I laughed at because just because of like my immature mind was when the little girl goes. I love the part where Shamu gets everybody wet, and I was like, oh, <laughs> don't 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 say that when you've got people like me on this planet. I'll take that the wrong way immediately. And those teeth, man, you could land you could land a plane on those things. And clearly, those glasses mean she's trying to become Harry Potter before Harry Potter was even a thing. C- clearly, clearly, they are magnifying glasses. What? They are magnifying glasses. It's insane. It's just it insane. Is but you know what's even... <clears throat> I think the best one by far, in terms of where it was used... <clears throat> and this isn't like the quality of the commercial. This is just where it was used in Blackfish. You know that section where they're talking about um, how SeaWorld separates the mothers and the babies? Mm, yes. And how it's really like, morally deprived. Um, and they show the commercial of the baby being born and how wonderful it is. And, oh, look at the baby Shamu. Isn't it so cute? And then they literally remove it from the tank and send it to another aquarium, and the mother was depressed for days. Yeah, yeah, that was a very effective use of it. I, I gotta say, it didn't, it didn't quite live up to what I had pictured in my mind when you when you described it to me, though. I figured that was going to be a problem <laughs> because, like, like the, the the part you describe about the whale blowing the blood out of the blowhole. Yeah, I kind of overplayed it. It's a very quick shot. It's very quick, and all this is like in like crappy. Somebody filmed it from the stands footage. Right, <laughs> like, but it is still horrifying. It's, it's still terrible. Um, it's just that you don't really get as good a look at it. What I pictured in my mind was way worse. So when I watched it, I don't think it hit me with the the effectiveness that it was supposed to. But 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 at the same time, it was a very well made documentary. Um, I think I think the other really good use of um. This visuals because there's no narrator, which I thought was weird, but it definitely works for it. I really expected there to be a narrator. I've seen I've seen documentaries not to have a narrator before. It is very weird, like at, at first, but you get used to it. Um, oh, definitely. I, I think a narrator would have kind of see the the wonderful thing about Blackfish that makes it so good is that it is an extremely to call it not it's it's biased but not in the wrong way. Like it's clearly telling you a very specific point about SeaWorld. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, the way, I think a narrator would have made it more like, oh, fuck them, fuck anybody who has animals. But with this very, you know, here's show, don't tell kind of presentation, it lends credence to, hey, this is fucked up. Because they show you a lot more than what they tell you. Like the, blo- like the fucking whale blowing the blood out of its blowhole. Yeah, there's no, they don't describe that. There's nobody pointing it out, being like, look at this, look what's happening. See that right there? See it? I mean, somebody tells you why it's happening, but they don't tell you, isn't that fucked up? Yeah, like that seemed, still, okay, this is what happened. That seemed basically like amounted to somebody was like, so the whales would start kicking each other's ass. Like, obviously they didn't say it in those words, but that's basically it. They're just talking about all these different like fights that these whales get into. And then you yeah. just see the one with the blood just like shooting out. And then, then they cut to a shot where the whale was just floating dead or, or has sunk down to the bottom of the tank, blood coming up. Oh. Ugh, such a horrifying, horrifying documentary. Um, that and the use of you know you know that you know the part where um they're talking about when the the last girl was killed. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dawn Brad Dawn Branshaw, I believe is her name. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. Something. I know her first name is Dawn, and she uh, they clearly had video of what the whale did to her. Yeah. They could they 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 were implying it, but they felt it would be so much more effective if they just used they they used that police call at the beginning, which was terrifying, and then they used the intercut of what was it they they, they cut between the shot of like the camera shaking, only showing the water, yeah, and it was it kept shaking back and forth, and then they would cut to. 
I don't. What, what do they cut to? Did they cut to a picture of like open water, or I, f- I forget. Um, I don't remember. I do remember this shot of like just open water in the middle of one of these tanks, and I kept thinking, "Oh my god, there's gonna be like a like a fucking dick, like a like a head or a hand that comes up covered in blood." Yeah, I, m- I remember. Um, I know what you're talking about. I just can't remember what exactly it was that they cut away to. Um, yeah. At the same time, fucking really effective scene. Um, wonderful, wonderful documentary. Now that it's on Netflix, no excuse not to watch it. I also really like the uh, how they cut in the trailer for Orca. That see, that was fucking awesome. I um, I gotta say, um, probably also because of the way it was described to me, it was a lot shorter than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, it's only about an hour and a half. Like I remember, um, it was over, and I looked, I looked at my clock, and I was like, it's over. Um, because it's like, um. My description of it was longer than the movie. Yeah, very much so. But uh, it uh, a lot of the segments were just a lot shorter than I thought they would be. Like, there's a part about them actually chasing down the, the whales, capturing them, that was a lot shorter than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, that's that's a movie unto itself right there. Oh. And the um, the segment, which, which one was it? Oh, the other one that I was kind of like, oh, that's all there is to it. The, the one where the naked guy gets found in the tank. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I was really waiting for that one, and then it was over in like two seconds. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I, I, I exaggerate. I buried the lead so much on that fucking story. Because <laughs> believe it or not, that was like the main thing I wanted to talk about because of how fucked up it was. Yeah. Where I was like, how how did this not get out? Like, But, um, but it's, by the same token, the stuff that was in it that you didn't actually get around to talking about in the Thanksgiving special, like the... Uh, that thing in Spain, whatever that place was called. Oh yeah, Poro. Uh, Poro. Wait, hang on. Laurel Park. Yeah. Yeah, those places are some of those. Uh, there were a few stories that you didn't actually get to in your um, in your uh, spiel last time. Yeah. And I, I uh, so I really enjoyed those because I had no preconceived notions of what those were going to look like. <laughs> yeah, like that one. Uh, the one that was on video of the whale that bit the guy's foot. Yeah. And it wouldn't let go, and how fucking scared he was. Or the one that it kept dragging him down to the bottom and taking, bringing him back up, and he just like remained calm and shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Until it oh. until it finally let him go, and then he like broke. <laughs> oh, he fucking dashed, and the whale went back and chased him again. Yeah. Oh, Jesus! Came after him like fucking jaws. Oh, it was so scary. And you just see him fucking scrambling to get up to get to get up in the water, and the, the people just run out to help him. He starts to run, but his foot's fucked up, and he like falls. Oh, it's so it's so hard. It's it's literally like a scene out of a horror movie. It, it's so horrifying. It is very much. I felt like that whale was like whale Michael Myers at that moment, and I'm like, get out of there, man. <laughs> yeah. At the same time, though, it, it's weird. I've never seen a documentary paint two sides of opposing like opposing like you know opposing interests as both being sympathetic. Like. I mean, the whole thing is made to make you feel bad for the whale, but at the same time, you see them as, like, these dangerous animals. I think that's the point. Mm -hmm. Because their point is not so much that whales... I mean, their their, their points are twofold. One, whales are too dangerous. Killer whales are are definitely too dangerous to keep in in captivity. I mean, they're called... Two... I mean, they're called killer whales for a reason, guys. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, that's one thing. Two, it's inhumane to keep an animal like this with what happens in captivity in captivity. Right. You know... You know what I mean? It's it's just that kind of thing. So I mean, if the if the circumstances were different and it was like possible to keep a killer whale in captivity without any like psychological trauma, then it would be different. Um, I mean, that's the thing. It's I mean, physical in, in, injury is horrible, and you know, animal cruelty, physical animal cruelty is is an issue unto itself, and that's that's covered. But mental is even more horrifying. Really, they wouldn't have that much of a problem if they didn't have to if they didn't try to have so many fucking whales at once. Like, I don't understand why can't they yeah. just have, like, one or two, like, or three whales, because... Yeah, but, I mean, Dylan, that gets to another problem, because they live in these giant family groups, and then they'd be isolated. Yeah, but I'm just looking at it from the, uh... I mean, from a physical standpoint, you're absolutely right, like, but I mean... Like, when they're talking about sea land, and they're like, we had, like, 20 whales in this little metal box. I'm like, why would you put 20 whales in there? <laughs> I don't think it was twenty, but yeah, it was a lot. It was at least seven. <laughs> it was an, it was entirely too many whales for what they had, <laughs> and they were gigantic. They were already like seventeen, ni- like seventeen to nineteen feet long, and the fucking tank is twenty by thirty. Yeah, it's like, are you high? This 
this does not compute. Um, it doesn't. It really doesn't. Why not build another box? <laughs> but, I mean, that's the thing. It's like, it was clearly this cheap little fucking, like, you know, this cheap little dingy pool. It's clear they spent all their money on actually acquiring the whales. You know what I mean? Exactly. If you're going to um, spend money on acquiring more whales, you need to also spend more money on expanding your space. Because, believe it or not, whales take up space. True. Apparently that's a thing. Um, Apparently space declines in the presence of fucking whales. Um, <laughs> yeah. I wonder – this is just something that, that – because I actually rewatched it the other day as well, so this is definitely a fitting conversation. Um, we'll get to the Christmas stuff later. Don't worry. Um, but uh, you know what something occurred to me when I watched it this time, and this is my third time through, was the fact that – you know that you know, there's that shot I mentioned earlier where the whale is has sunk to the bottom of the tank after dying from the other whale ramming it. Yes. How the fuck do they get rid of those bodies without anybody noticing? Because clearly all of this stuff is far from public knowledge, but also clearly it's shot clearly during opening like during times where the park is open. I don't know. It it's a mystery unto itself how the fuck they get rid of those bodies. Well, they would have to disassemble the bodies. Um, oh my god, I didn't even think of that. I mean, that would be the only practical way of doing it. Um, and I mean, they could make some more money out of that just by itself, because I'm assuming orcas have blubber, and blubber is used for, like, perfume and shit. Yeah, but that's also illegal. Not if they don't know. <laughs> that's, yeah, but no, Dylan, that, that, I don't think they've gone that far. That's illegal, but I mean, disassembling them, I'm sure. Yeah, I didn't even think of that. That's probably what they do. Because think about it this way. They when when most of these whales are acquired, they're relatively young for killer whales. Like they're you know they're like four or you know four, four to ten, I believe, is the age where you're usually you usually acquire them. Yeah, like, when you're capturing them in the wild, it's usually younger. It's like that you know Captain Morgan looking motherfucker says at the beginning they were only after the uh, the um, young ones. Right. And he said he it was his understanding that it was because of transportation. I'm thinking yeah that plus they'd be easier to train. I mean. Well, that too, but also it's like imagine how well imagine how much more dangerous it is. Like, I mean, get past the teeth thing. Many of these people died more from the weight of the whales than they did from the actual mouth. Oh, yeah. Like, there's that guy who was riding on the whale's back, and the whale jumped on him. Yeah, yeah, the guy that got crushed by a whale. Oh, oh that was horrifying. That was hor- horrifying too. Now, let me ask you this. And apparently, he's Did still you... alive. <laughs> well, that was, I was just about to mention that. Is that dude still alive? That's what they said. They said that he his like swimsuit held everything together, and now he's like, uh, he's he's. Uh, I'm, <laughs> from what I gathered, he's like a fucking vegetable now, which is that's that's what I got as well. But then they said something else later. I don't remember exactly what it was, but they're like, I thought they were saying that he was killed. Mm, I, I got the impression that he was still alive. Yeah, I, I, I guess I just read that particular part of it wrong. Um, how shocking was it, though? When I, where... saw, when I saw the whale land on him, I assumed he was dead. But then a few minutes later, they were like, he's alive. And I'm like, really? <laughs> oh, it reminds me of that scene from The Incredible Hulk where uh, Blonsky gets kicked by the Hulk and he gets c- kicked into the tree. Oh, yeah. He probably looked like that. Oh. Probably. And they cut that shot of him in the hospital where he's got, like, the metal fucking, the metal, like, uh exoskeleton holding him together. Oh. Yeah. Oh, man. Um, I imagine it would look something like that. Um, but, uh, it is a great documentary. I'm glad you finally got the chance to see it. It was. It was very good. Yeah. As someone who's um, watched a lot of documentaries in the past few months because I got addicted after Room 237, it was, it was, <laughs> it was very yeah. good. It, it was quite good. I, I really... It's it's really oh, eye opening. Again, if you haven't seen it, there's no excuse now. It's on Netflix. It's on every every major video download site. I'm sure there's a DVD release if you can get it that way. And if, um, and if you've never seen a SeaWorld commercial from the '80s, I need a good laugh. Yeah, that that too. <laughs> go, go look him. Go look him up. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty fucking funny. Um, uh, the other one is the fucking whales that are jumping through the clouds with that with those kids on the plane. I seem to remember that one. That one must have been during the, like the nineties. I think they said it was two thousand seven. Oh, really? they they usually put labels on them. Oh, okay. Yeah, maybe maybe I did see that one before because I seem to remember that one. Like when that one. See, I never remember Sea World commercials until I like see one and I'm like, oh, I've seen that before. Right, right, right. Um. Yeah, don't go to Sea World. Um. 
Yeah. Or at least don't support them. <laughs> if you want to break in, that's fine, but... If you want... not, not that I'm supporting, like, you know, breaking into places, but, you know, don't pay to go into the sea world. If you want to go into there to, you know, take them down from the inside, no. <laughs> well, Zoro on fucking sea world, Orca Man. <laughs> or, or if you just want to go through the aquarium part just to look at the dolphins. The dolphins. Yeah, are... but I, how how much do you bet that like it's the same shit going on with them that but this documentary just didn't tell you about it? I'm imagining that though that the dolphins probably don't go through as much trauma just because it's a lot easier to take care of a dolphin. That's that's true, but at the same time, I mean, I mean, killer whales are technically dolphins, so yeah, just really big dolphins, but still, that, that's I mean, they're, that's, they're enormous that's, dolphins, but it's that huge, it's that huge problem right there. Um, is what you eliminate with a dolphin or with a potbelly orca. Why that hasn't happened yet, I don't know. Oh, God. Fucking, if you if you make potbelly orcas, this entire problem is solved. The whole problem is solved. People could have potbelly orcas in their home. I want one. Yeah, who doesn't want a potbelly orca? Because if he goes psycho and tries to kill you, you can take him. Yeah. It's all good. What, what do you think, Max, like six, seven feet long? What, a potbelly orca? Yeah. Uh, I would imagine somewhere... Six, seven feet long. It's like it's like a, It's like a shark, I guess. No, that's too big. Like, I mean, you're talking like great white. I mean, that's too big. I mean, a great white's like twenty. No, that's that's jaws size. More like I don't know, seventeen feet. I don't know, I'm talking about your your basic shark that you would run into like in a coral. Like a reef shark. Like in a coral reef or something. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's that's about six or seven feet, I guess. Because bull sharks are really considered large sharks, and they get up to be like I don't know, twelve feet. Did you hear? Um, I heard this recently from my cousin, who I got addicted to Shark Week when we were kids. <clears throat> so ever since then, been addicted to, like, Shark Week and mainly the shark attack stories because of, you know, the, how fucking horrifying they are and um, all that stuff. Um, but one, you know, they have this, like, set list of if you get attacked by a shark, here's what you do kind of thing. Yeah, I've always heard jab them in the eye. Jab them in the eye, punch them in the nose, grab their gills, all that stuff. Here's one I never heard until recently, and this one's like, oh my god, that makes so much sense. Shank him. No. Uh. Yes. <laughs> Shoot it in the fucking face. Um, no. If you get attacked by a shark... Bitch slap it. Get up on top of it and grab its tail. Because the only thing that can do that in the ocean is a killer whale. And if, if that happens, the shark thinks it's being attacked by a killer whale. And it'll automatically leave you alone. Huh. How fucked up is that? Sharks are dumb. Yeah, it's it's well, they're they're smart for what they have to do. <laughs> they're very well. As, as, said, as said by Hooper and Jaws, all this thing does is eat. Huh, oh wait, what was it? Eat and make little sharks. That's all. Oh, for yeah, from an ev- evolutionary standpoint, they're very effective. I'm just saying in terms of intelligence. <laughs> no, they're not. They're not. They're not problem solvers. But no, no, they are kind of problem solvers. They're not like they don't have a, what's the word. They are they are definitely. Pro- I read a book once called um, oh, fuck, what was it called? Um, Sharks on my mind, I think it was called. Good book, and it was talking about how there's this misconception that sharks really are fucking dumb, mm-hmm. and how they're just kind of these. They're kind of like um, they're they're perceived as this big dumb animals that just go around killing whatever they see, and that's totally not true at all. They actually, um, a long time ago, I think it was like the mid-70s, and uh, they, they tested it down in Jamaica. Sharks could fucking solve puzzles. <laughs> if uh, Not like, not like handheld, but like, you know, it, let's say um, you did like a, a Skinner box type of thing, where you would give it an objective that it, would, that it would get food for. You could train a shark to do basic things. Give it a fucking Rubik's Cube. Um. Yeah, it could solve a Rubik's cube. It could, you know, it could su- sudo- you know, Sudoku, whatever, whatever. Wait, Sudoku? S- Sudoku. Sudoku. Yeah, that's it. Um, it could solve Sudoku, Sudoku puzzles. You know, all that shit. Um, you know, the Riddler was a shark. <laughs> yeah, so he was. Bat shark and Riddler shark. Um, <laughs> no, but they can solve like basic, basic puzzles. Like they can, if they see. Also, they actually know generally the difference between them and their reflection in a mirror. Hmm. Like most sharks or most animals, like cats will even do this, and cats are relatively intelligent. If a cat sees a mirror and they see themselves in the mirror, they're like, who the fuck is that? Yeah, there's an actual there's an actual term for that. Um, it's a certain theory that I don't recall the name. 
I, I took a psychology course once, and uh, yeah, I, I, I'm, I have my psychology final tomorrow. <laughs> I don't remember what it's called. What um, theory of self? No, that's no. There, Something like that. There's yeah. some sort of term for when a creature is capable of like looking at a reflection or image of itself and being like, "That is just an image of me. That is not a separate entity." You know what I mean? Right, 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 right. Like, I don't remember. Yeah, I know what you mean. Like, they, they can't separate, they can't, like, to their, in their mind, they can't exteriorly see themselves. Right. There's also another one that, like, some creatures, if you, like, if you were to take something and put it, like, behind a sofa, they would not know that it was there because they could no longer see it. So they would just sort of forget that. And and this is something that, like, children have to learn how to do this. Yeah, it's called sensory memory. Yeah, yeah, where, like, if you take a, a little baby and you hide something, they literally forget that it exists because they can't see it. It's, this is why... Right, this is right, why, yeah. This is why peekaboo is so effective. <laughs> sensory memory and short... There's three types of memory. There's short-term memory, sensory memory, and long-term memory. Sensory memory is when... When I opened up my Skype page tonight in order to you know, talk to, to get Dylan on Skype and record the FOS, I know what Skype looks like. Indeed. And I know what it's going to look like when I open it without having opened it. Given that they haven't updated. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, but the basic, you know, basic principle of it. Which from what That's I, called sit. Which, to be fair, Skype doesn't change that often. It's Facebook. It's yeah, YouTube you have to worry about. You know, Skype does it sometimes. It, it hasn't done it much since I've had it, but it definitely does do it. Um, so, sensory memory. This kind. This this comes from sensory memory. When I opened up Skype for the first time, it made an, a, a picture of what Skype looks like in my brain, and that was put in the short term memory. Babies don't have this. <laughs> um, in, 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 when you, when when you. Well, when to, you, to begin when, with, to begin with, babies' um, eyesight isn't quite fully developed yet, so their brains really haven't learned how to start. Um, remembering things because they can't see all that clearly. Everything's a, right, everything's that, a big yeah. blur. They can recognize facial features actually. Um, yeah, but even then, it's they're short. I, I guess it's not really so much sensory memory as short term memory. Like, well, here, here's what I'll say: their sensory memory is more is is less you know susceptible to put things into short term memory, hmm. and almost impossible to put in the long term. So if the, if you, I imagine bringing like a one year old. Back and forth into a room would be fucking confusing for them. Exactly. As I was saying, this is why the game Peekaboo is so effective. When you put that hand in front of your face and then remove it, it's literally like you're teleporting because it's like you're there and then you're not, and then you're there and then you're not, and that's just right. the way they see it. Um, right. And yeah, but it's weird because um, to get back to the what we were talking about, sharks don't have this problem. Mm -hmm. As most animals do. Again, cats very intelligent. Cats, you know, can be trained to recognize names. They can be trained to do tricks and stuff. You know, they, they have – you can morph a cat's behavior. You can do that with a shark too, but it's a lot harder. Right. Um, mainly because their instincts are so strong. Right. And which is why which is why they've been so successful. Sharks are one of those creatures that survive mostly on instinct. Um, yeah, there's no philo philosophical sharks. <laughs> it's when you get into into mammals really that you start seeing more and more uh, divulgence away from pure instinct and more towards um actual thought. But um, uh, not to say that sharks don't have any actual thought, because again, yeah, as you just said, they've been known to solve simple puzzles. But the, but, but again, most of what they all... most of what they do is completely instinctual, instinctually based. Um, exactly. Most of what they do is for the pursuit of food. They, that's their main instinct, and they'll do whatever they have to do in order to, you know, get to that get to that uh, goal. And the problem solving more comes from that. So I guess that that's more of an extension of instinct, instinct than, um, you know. I'll, we'll, go, we'll go back to killer whales. When a killer whale, this is in Blackfish. There's a there's a scene where the killer whale is like sticking out its tongue at the uh, at the camera. You know, that's not. There's no pursuit there for food or anything. Right. At least at least not directly. Um, yeah, the, the killer whale seems to be genuinely like you know interacting with what it sees. Um, right. Because as they pull away from the glass with the with the camera, he puts the uh, or she whatever it is puts the tongue back into the mouth. But then when they come back towards the um, glass, he tries to look the camera again. Um, right. And this isn't trained. It's just what he naturally wanted to do. And it was a he. I think it was. I think that was the big whale. Um, the one that the movie was about, 
But uh, one one thing we talked about last time that uh, that kind of builds into this is the idea of the reptilian brain, where you know most creatures have this because we all came from reptiles. Um, and I don't know if I, I guess killer whales would have to have this, right? Yeah, yeah, because. Obviously, being mammals, they evolved along similar lines as us until they went into the sea, and that's that's just the basic part of the brain. The like the stem underneath the big mushroomy part is right. is the reptile brain. That's just all your basic. This is what controls like breathing. This is why we don't have to constantly remember. Okay, I need to breathe. Right, right, breathe. right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is also why. The, a snake is fucking possible because their brains are so differently shaped than ours and differently structured that they don't need, like, you know, this giant housing to encase this fucking gigantic brain. You look at a killer whale's head, uh, mainly the part that's actually called the melon. Um, it's this gigantic bulge at the top of the head, which is literally because the the brain is so large that, that their their heads evolved in order to case this gigantic brain. Right. Um. We make fun of this with our character in Sons of Sarazawa called Clarence the Raptor. Indeed. Um, <laughs> whose head is, you know, he's gotten so smart that his head has literally grown, grown gigantic in, in order to encase this brain. There's a similar thing among squids. Squids have very large brains. Yeah, they, definitely. They, they're certainly famous for their gigantic cranium. <laughs> Do you know that squids don't actually have a heart? I did actually. I've dissected a squid before. Oh, have you? In high school, yes. Now, the question is, do squids have a soul? <laughs> I didn't find it. Um, <laughs> they do have this very small, like they have this one very thin, I think it's made of cartilage. They, they don't have skeletons, you know, but they have this one very thin thing that goes through the middle of their body called a pin. It's just this really flimsy, hard thing that I guess is there for structure, even though they don't have skeletons to speak of. Right, they're, they're, they're mollusks. Mollusks, are, right. mollusks aren't they? And it is, yes, and it is incredibly hard to remove the pin without breaking it. Um, in fact, my high school teacher was handing out extra credit points if you could pull this thing out without breaking it. Um, right, right. Because it's very difficult. I think it's made out of... I don't know if it's made out of cartilage, because it wouldn't break if it was made out of cartilage. It would just, like, bend. What, what else? No. Well, yeah, I guess it wouldn't, though, because cartilage is spongy. So I guess it must be a really, like, thin... Can't be bone, because they definitely don't have bones. If not bone, something... Because the beak, the beak is made out of, like, the same thing that your fingernails are made out of. Maybe not bone, but maybe something that would eventually evolve into bone. <laughs> what, uh, what is, what is, like, the, um... What's your fingernail made out of? There's a name for that. Is it? What is it? It's not keratin, is it? I don't know. That, that doesn't sound right, but it, it's called like you, the uh, what is it? What a rattlesnake's rattle is made out of is what your fingernails are made out of too, and I believe that's also what a fucking squid's beak is made out of. If I'm not mistaken. I watched a um, I watched a special on Netflix recently called Search for the Colossal Squid, which giant squids, Archituthis, are these literal monsters of the deep that we only realized were real creatures up, I guess, about five years ago. Oh, it is Very, It is keratin. Uh, keratin is a family... Keratin? Keratin is a family of fiber structural proteins. Keratin is the key structural material making up the outer layer of human skin. It is also the key structural component of hair and nails. Yeah. Is that is that what that, bone, what that structure is then? I don't know. It could be. And apparently, I, I just looked this up. Apparently, it, even though it's not technically a skeleton because squids don't have skeletons, it does. Uh, it uh, the pin has the same function. It says it supports the mantle and uh, provides a, a place for muscle attachment, which makes sense because they're not exoskeletal either. They don't have a hard shell no. outside, so the muscles have to attach to something. <clears throat> no, well, there's. I guess the proper word for them is cephalopods, and you know they don't have anything. Um, yeah. Like if you look at an octopus, I mean octopus are. Octopi, I'm sorry. Um, octopi, when you see them in person, fucking gigantic. Oh yeah. Like the north, like the um, the northern Pacific octopus is fucking huge, but you can fit it inside of a coke can. Yeah, you can just take it and squeeze it together until it's the size of a of a it's, coke can. It's nuts. It's insane. You could literally, how big? They're bigger. They're like the size of your torso, and like from your hip up, that's how big they are. And the arm, that's not even counting the arms. Like, the arms are a whole different story. Well, it's because they're so uncomplicated. They're they're not that far ahead of, like, sponges um, in, terms right, exactly. of, in terms of how they complicated they are. Um, also, horrifying creatures. 
ter- terrifying. Almost as bad as spiders. I wouldn't go that far, but they are quite a freaky. <laughs> I mean, it's they're also extremely aggressive. Intelligent, too. Octopi. They attack people all the time. You hear constant stories of people getting attacked by squids. Like, if you go down to, like, um, what is it, the, key, the Keys, the Florida Keys, where there's a lot of squid? No, I'm sorry, the um, the Sea of Cortez, that, that on the completely opposite side of the country. The Sea of Cortez is filled with squid, mm-hmm. uh, the Humboldt squid. And when you... uh. Am I hearing a sonic screwdriver go off? Huh? I hear a sonic screwdriver going off. I don't know why you hear a sonic screwdriver going off because there's. Is that you? No, it's not. Oh, all right, whatever. <laughs> this is a sonic screw, uh, screwdriver going off. Oh my bad. Um, is that elevens or tens? That is eleven. Nice. I'm getting one for Christmas. Um, I don't have a ten. I have my, my ten is broken. Um. But uh. If you go down to the Sea of Cortez and you see these fucking fishermen who fish for, I don't think they actually fish for the Humboldt squid, but they fish for fish in that area, and they are just fucking covered in scars because these things are so aggressive that, you know, they'll literally jump up through your net just to attack you. I think one of the That's most, how aggressive they are. I think one of the most terrifying things, if I was scuba diving and I saw this coming for me, it would scare me worse than a shark or an orca or anything else. I don't know if... Is a, I probably, is, a, is a giant squid. Yeah, well, I mean, take comfort in the fact that they can't come to this kind of... To the water pressure you can go to... Yeah, no, they live... They can't. They live, yeah, they would die. They live in the deep, deep, deep parts of the ocean, I um, I know, but still... If I, I mean, that's why we didn't even know about them until recently, because we've just recently developed cameras that can go down there. Like, the, I mean, that's why the only way you could... That's why the only reason the, the fucking legends existed was, was because they would come up with sperm whales. Well, that, and the only time they ever do come up to the surface is as dead. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Every now and then they um, find a dead giant squid. Um, I mean, it wasn't so much that we didn't think they existed up in, like, it wasn't a Sasquatch thing. Like, it wasn't like they were mocked as part of a science. It was more of, we don't know what they are or how big they get. Yeah. You know, we don't know if this is all a member of the same species. We don't know anything about these things. You know, we don't even know, we don't know anything. Um, so you can't rely on a half-eaten giant squid to be like, this is a species. Right. It could literally just be like, this is a piece of sperm whale shit. <laughs> Um, I also, I watched this other documentary, uh, about sperm whales, and, uh, I believe it's called Inside Inside Nature's Giants, excellent documentary series, in which, um, any gigantic creature, and not like kaiju, but like actual, the actual creatures on the planet that are giant, um, whenever they die, they do autopsies on them, they did one on the giant squid, they did one on a sperm whale, I think they did one on a blue whale, which was fucked up, um, I'm assuming at some point they had to have done this with an elephant, um, I believe they did, they did, they did it with a giraffe and all this shit, um, the sperm whale is my favorite episode, though, because it is a, hor- like, just a horrible job to have, because it, it's a literal, I, I think it's an act- actually a part of the, um, the European government, because they're, they're fucking, all over the coast of Europe um, because they get beached all the time and they die and they're gigantic and they decompose and they attract, you know, other animals that people don't want on beaches and they just fucking, they're dangerous because very, very disgusting video online where a sperm whale literally exploded on the beach and it killed a lot of people um, because the gases build up inside the animal and because the animal is so fucking big. Yeah. Um, it, the gases can't get out and it builds up to the point of explosion. Are they, what's the, what's the largest species of whale? Do you know? Blue whale. Is the blue one? Blue whales are the largest animals on the planet. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, of the, of the toothed whales, of the stuff that orcas are a part of, it's the sperm whale, but, um, which is funny because killer whales actually prey on sperm whales. Um, (laughs) Uh, but the reason for that is more of sperm whales travel in much smaller pods, and they don't really, they don't go after animals that are, that killer whales go after. They're big, but they eat other, they eat a lot smaller things. Like look at a sperm whale's mouth; it's fucking tiny. Yeah, yeah. Blue whales have those have that really weird. They don't have like teeth, right? They have this... no. They're ba- they're baleen whales. Yeah. Yeah. Have that... Their mouths are filled with like toothbrushes and shit. Not literally, but <laughs> they've got mouths like that. Um, fucking toothbrushes. Like a creature in Doctor Who. This is the toothbrush monster. <laughs> it's like a third, third third Doctor story. Um, 
<laughs> Try to capture one of those, SeaWorld. Yes, SeaWorld. I dare you. Um, I'm not going to. Do you remember? Uh, you have a blue wheel, motherfucker. <laughs> do you remember? Oh shit. Um, do you remember Star Trek IV: Voyage Home? Yes. That movie is bullshit. I love. Wait, now let me say this. I love that movie, but that movie is bullshit. Because of the whale stuff. Because no, well, yes, but here's the thing: we don't put humpbacks in captivity. You can't. Because you can't fucking feed them. Right. That movie is horse. Unless I'm crazy, but I don't think humpbacks can be in captivity. A, they're too fucking big, and B, you can't feed them. They eat like fucking krill and shit. You can't put that in a tank. They filter feed. Hmm. So when I saw that movie, I was like, bullshit. <laughs> bullshit. I call bullshit Star Trek. Yes, Star Trek. How dare you be inaccurate with your beaming and your blue whales, or not blue, humpback whales, and your fucking, yeah. Yep, there are, there's no fucking humpbacks in captivity. And they haven't tried in decades, so. They, they have tried. They've tried to put everything in captivity. Like, I believe they tried to put, they've tried to put great whites in captivity constantly. It's fucking impossible. I don't know why, though, with the Great Whites. Like, you, you would think Great Whites would at least be feasible. Um, but they've tried, and they've always died, or at least come close. Hmm. Like they, This is one of the few good things about Jaws 3. Um, do you remember that scene where they have the, the baby Great White in that pool, and it dies, like, immediately? Yeah, yeah. That's the one good thing about that movie. That was legitimately, like, interesting and accurate to science. Um, and then there was the weird. rest of the movie. Yeah, unlike the rest of the movie. Yeah, great whites can penetrate glass, right? Right, guys? If we, right? <laughs> if we had known what we know now, they could have made Jaws 3 with a Vorka. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? Well, they did that in the video game. You ever played Jaws Unleashed? No. There's a scene where you actually fight an Orca, and you have, and you, there's literally this shot where the, where Jaws is so big that it comes up through the water and bites the Orca in half. That is amazing. It's, it's bullshit, but it's awesome. Jaws, Jaws versus Tilikum. <laughs> yeah, it was Jaws versus Shamu. Um, I'm assuming that they didn't uh, go through the trouble of putting the uh, what's it called uh, dorsal collapse in the in the game. Um, I doubt it. Uh, at least as far as I remember. Um, but you remember? Uh, well, no, you wouldn't remember. Um, the the one thing about that game or about Jaws in general is that the shark is only like 25 feet long. Yeah. And that's freakishly huge for a great white. Like, that's rare. Like, or impossible, even. Like, there's a scene in Jaws where they literally go, this is impossible. Um, so, you know, great whites don't get that big. And then, but, you know, even then, that's, that's nothing for an orca. An or orcas get to be like, I don't know, 32 feet? Yeah. You know, fully grown female, males get even bigger. They're enormous. And they live to be about 35 years old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure they do. Go look at a fucking orca and tell me how old it is in the wild. Sea World. Yeah, Sea World. Sea World. Um, that, that was also fucked up. Like, what is Sea World there for? Primarily. To teach people about sea animals. Yeah, and they're fucking lying through their teeth in order to support their fucking business. And you know, the people that are telling you this, these lies have been, they don't know how long an orca lives. They've just been told to say this, so they think it's true. That's the worst part. They, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. It's like, you can't blame these trainers because they're not fucking bi uh, zoologists or marine biologists. They they think, oh, I'm doing a good thing. I'm telling people about killer whales. Well, you're lying about killer whales. Uh. <laughs> well, the fucking tra the, the trainers in the video say, I don't know anything about killer whales. Right, I, just, I know how to train killer whales. I, I know how to train an animal. Period. Like. Yeah, exactly. You know, what I mean, I I don't know anything about killer whales in in the environment. Like the, that's why the ending is there. They go off on this boat and they see them in the wild and they're like, "Oh my god, it's beautiful." Um, it, it's a really disturbing scene for that reason. Um. So yeah, I, Blackfish is just such a good documentary. So Christmas. Um, yeah, <laughs> Christmas, uh, 45 minutes in. Um, uh, sorry for the uh, diversion, uh, but I wanted to know how Dylan felt about Blackfish, and it, it's a nice sequel to our Thanksgiving special. So, Dylan, Christmas. So now we so now we won't talk about Blackfish again until New Year's. <laughs> <No>. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, it's true. No. Um, no, 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 it's, 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 we probably won't. Um, unless something happens within the coming up weeks. Um, it probably won't be a New Year's special anyway. How do you do a New Year's special? Like, what do you want me to say? It's... We could, but we're not going, we're not going to. Um, <laughs> Because I'm busy New Year's Eve. Um, I will be doing things that may or may not be illegal. Um, Me as well. And, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, we will not go into any more details on that. Um, so, Dylan, I gave you homework. Right. About my homework. <laughs> did the dog eat your homework? Or did the orca eat your homework? My pot belly orca ate my homework. Um, <laughs> Everyone, uh, I gave Dylan an assignment before we started recording tonight, like yeah, like last night. And I told him that in honor of Christmas, that my Christmas gift to Dylan is he gets to come up with a segment on DFOS. <laughs> and I did not get a very positive answer when I told him about this. To be fair, I forgot. Um, uh, that's okay. So you have nothing? I, I have absolutely jack shit. <laughs> you know what, Dylan? What if I came to you and I was like, then we have nothing to talk about? <laughs> Because I I, rel- I was relying on you, man. Well, oh well. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I prepared for this. I knew you'd fuck up. Um, no. We were prepared for this eventuality. Um, I have something we can talk about. Christmas specials. We're doing one. The FOS motherfucking Christmas. Um, Dylan, Christmas specials are wonderful. Indeed. I love Christmas specials. You know what I mean? I, I grew up on Christmas specials. Like, you know, we all grew up on such timeless classics as the Power Rangers Christmas special and Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The Beetleboard Christmas special. You know, all those classics. Um some Christmas specials are remembered for how good they are, and some Christmas specials are hunted down vigorously by fans for how bad they are, like the Star Wars Christmas special. The Star Wars Christmas special. Uh, or Star Wars holiday special holiday. may or may not be about Christmas. Whatever, George, you know. Quoting from George Lucas there. If you're on Kashyyyk, happy life, uh, happy life day. What the fuck? Happy uh, life day. Um, if we have any listeners on Kashyyyk. <laughs> <laughs> any Wookiee listeners out there? Uh, I can't do it. Uh, oh, there we go. That was a nice. Uh, that was wait. a nice. Uh, uh, that was a nice uh, life day carol there. Uh, <laughs> So for our Christmas special, we said, hey, you know what, you know what we want to emulate? The Star Wars Christmas special. <laughs> yes, because that's such a promising thing to do. Um, no, but uh, aside from those wonderful holiday classics, there are other holiday specials out there. Um, Dylan, primarily I think the one that Christmas is most – associated with in terms of like, you know, when you think Christmas and specials, one thing comes to mind and that's Rankin Bass. Oh yeah. I I, I mean, I think that's fair, right? I mean, everybody remembers, everybody remembers Miracle on 34th street, Macy's and Rankin Bass. Um, I remember all three versions of Miracle on 34th street. (laughs) And, uh, Oh, there was a seventies version. Wasn't there? Yeah. There was one that everybody always forgets about in the seventies and that it's fucking horrible. I I just, a lot of people don't like the nineties one. And I'm like, it's leaps and bounds better than the 1970s one. (laughs) When you can, I think Richard Attenborough is a really good Santa. Um, I, I think, Fucking uh, Matilda sucks ass, but yeah, yeah, her her dialogue gets a little annoying in that movie. Then again, I mean, not to say the girl in the fucking first one doesn't, but at least she's got. Here's the thing: she has significantly less screen time in the original. Right. I think that's the issue: is that she's annoying, but she's got less screen time. Um, in the new one, because of who that actress was, I mean, she was in every fucking frame. Um, she also has the, the advantage of not being a child being, ri- being written in the nineties. Um, yeah, that's, that's also true. And they were like, Hey, um, children, tiny adults, right? Yeah. Well, <laughs> but I mean, the, the original was the same way. She was this fucking tight ass little bitch who. Yeah. But well, I mean, I don't know. It, it, it's just more apparent in the nineties version. If you ask me. Well, I mean, I think the reason is that we're, we, we remember that time we were like, kids weren't like that. Um, <laughs> when we think of the thirties, we're like, every kid had a job, right? <laughs> every kid had a job. <laughs> every kid was out there working to the grindstone. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I, think my, I don't know from experience what it was like to be a kid in the thirties. Um, I, you know, what my favorite scene in the original one is what the shot with the, the Santa who gets drunk. And uh, Chris has to become that that Santa. Like you can't do that nowadays because it doesn't mean anything. 
Yeah. Like, because of, like, movies like Bad Santa. Like, you don't need to fucking show Santa getting drunk, because it's like, okay, and? Yeah, Santa gets drunk. He's AA. Santa gets drunk. What about it? You know what I mean? Yeah, what, what, what's your problem there? My, um, Santa at my mall's drunk all the time. But... <laughs> I'm better high. I can't tell. Um, Just the other day, Santa bought me a beer. I don't know. <laughs> I was like, Santa, I'm underage. I don't care. Drink up. <laughs> and, um, and I got drunk with Santa. Uh, that's a story from the time. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I love I, I I love the original Miracle on 34th Street. But again, I think the thing that makes both both of the good versions of Miracle on 34th Street is um is the actors who portray Santa. Oh, you know, with the oh yeah. I mean, the supporting roles are, are uh, very well done in each case, with uh, with exceptions. Um, but major exceptions in both. But the uh, the character of Santa himself is is really the main focus, and both of those are very good Santas. I agree. Fred Gwynn and Richard Attenborough, fantastic uh, Chris Kringles. I mean, when I picture Santa, I picture Richard Attenborough. I mean, that's just me. Um, um, I personally picture Fred Gwynn only because I actually saw that version first. See, I didn't. And also, I don't know. He just looks like Santa to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Dylan. Um, he spared no expense. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to call you a Jurassic Park fanboy and you fucking cemented it. Um. Um, That's what he's really doing at the North Pole, kids. <laughs> he's making dinosaurs. He's breeding dinosaurs to fight in his battle arena. <laughs> to fight the Easter Bunny. Um, but, uh, I mean, the other one, of course, It's a Wonderful Life. Still one of my favorite movies. I love It's a Wonderful Life. Oh, um, we were going to say something about Rankin Best. Um, no, I know. I'm getting there. Um, another one, you know, there are so many versions throughout the years of uh, A Christmas Carol. Oh, God. I mean, my personal favorite will always be Scrooge. I fucking love Scrooge. Uh, which one? Bill Murray. Ah, oh, Bill Murray, yes. Uh, they're just... <laughs> yeah, Bill Murray. <laughs> <They're> serious... <laughs> love everyone! Love everybody! Okay, there are serious and non-serious versions, but anyway. I don't care. It's fucking Scrooge. Because Scrooge... I feel the same way about Scrooge as I, as I do about Young Frankenstein. Is that... It is an amazing... It, it tells the story first and then makes it funny. Mm-hmm. My favorite part is where he goes into, into his personal bathroom and it says, Cross, something they nail people to. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Um, but, but So many versions of that movie. You've got... Personally, I'm quite... Uh, I'm uh, very uh, fond of the uh, the 1951 version um, with... What's that guy's name? Oh, I was I was I was literally just watching it. Um, uh, that version. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I really like that version. I can't remember the actor's name, and it's killing me. Um, Buddy Hatchet. No. Um, no. Um, then of course there's the one with George C. Scott that everybody knows from the '80s. There was one in the '70s that's um, very underrated. Um, the one with the uh, fucking fucking Fonzie, Henry Winkler. Yeah. Um. Then there's the recent one that Disney did with Jim Carrey, but I won't go there. Um, I haven't seen it. I don't know if it's horrible or not. Um, tons of just... Uh, they put one out every fucking year, it seems like. Tons of parodies also, and like... Oh, oh, the, fucking The story shit. gets retold so many times in children's cartoons. And I, the one, oh, Batman Noel. I, the one I remember the most is um, from my childhood. Is they had one... You remember the Flintstones one? And then they also had one on... Um, the Looney Tunes did one where like did a Flintstone Christmas Carol. Yes. How come I don't remember this? I love the Flintstones. It, it was it was it's actually a really good children's interpretation of the story. Um, I remember the one where Fred became Santa, and I remember the one with that little kid Stony. Yeah, go look at the Flintstones Christmas Carol. It's actually a pretty good children's interpretation of the of the story. Well, it's not. I mean, I remember, it's actually I remember, it's actually the story of the, of this special is that they're putting. The, the Christmas Carol, they're putting it on as a play in in uh, Bedrock. So it's not actually just telling the story with the characters playing the parts. It's it's the story of them p- putting on that story. Does that make any sense? Yeah, um, I mean, it kind of reminds me of Batman Noel, where uh, you've got the guy telling telling the story of, of Christmas Carol, and you've got the story with Batman going on. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Um, there's also a, a Looney Tunes version that I remember where they had uh, Daffy Duck being Scrooge. And the thing about that one is it, it wasn't actually the, the story of Christmas Carol per se. It was like one of those like modern reinterpretations. 
but with uh, Lo- yeah, but with Looney Tunes characters. And that's a lot more of a parody than the um than the Disney version. Yeah, yeah. So so the tons ones. of tons of parodies and just um being retold in like children's form all over the place. Obviously, probably I would argue one of the more successful uh, Christmas stories of all time. Oh, I would I would say that that's absolutely true. I mean that and it's. Like, the two Christmas stories you see parody the most are that and It's a Wonderful Life. Yeah, and many people consider It's a Wonderful Life to be like the American Scrooge. I, I mean, I would say so. I mean, it's it's an amazing film. Jimmy Stewart is inherently charming. Um, it, it's, an under, it's an underdog story, and, you know, there's nothing, there's nothing more wonderful about Christmas than seeing people less fortunate win in the end. Um, it's, a, it's an entirely... I mean, it's a melodrama to a T. There's no real conflict because it's 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 essentially a Greek tragedy, uh, or no, not a Greek tragedy. What's the fucking word? What what's a um shit? What's it called when you've got a Greek play where a god comes in at the end and solves all the problems? Um, oh, God, it's not a myth. It's um, there's a term, and I really should know this. Um, there's a term for a Greek play. That always ends with the god coming in and solving all the play's problems, and I think I believe. No, it's not. I was about to say. Uh, I was about to say fucking. Uh, Nef- no, whatever it is. The fuck. What's it called? Um, never mind. Um, I was. It's a Wonderful Life is that because it's got all these conflicts going on, and then all of a sudden a god comes in at the end and solves all the. Solves all the conflicts, um, you know. I mean, Jimmy Stewart has to go through the uh, has to go through the character arc, but he doesn't really change. He doesn't go through a character arc. He just fucking realizes he has the will to live, um, which isn't so much a character arc. It's just like, hey, I don't want to die. Um, <laughs> you said he has to go through this character arc, but he doesn't really go through a character arc. Huh? Well, I, I, I rescind that statement. It's not really a character arc as much as I really don't want to kill myself anymore. Um, <laughs> Yippee. <laughs> but. That being said, I mean that that scene where he literally is about to commit suicide, but saves, but like actually saves somebody else from committing suicide is such a good scene, because um, it makes a lot of sense for his character. Yes. Um. Wonderful, wonderful film. Also. Uh... And when you watch it now, having seen all the parodies, it's weird how little of it is actually the angel showing him what it, what life would be like without him. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot more to it than that, really. I mean, most of it is more of everything before that. I mean, that's that only consists of, like, the last 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. Another thing, I don't, I don't know if how this applied to you, but b- being a kid in the 90s, I obviously grew up with uh, the Tim Allen Santa Claus uh, franchise. Um, of course. Of course. And as much as people hate it, Jingle All the Way was a big movie when I was a kid. Oh, God, I love Jingle All the Way. <laughs> It is it is an insane it is a guilty pleasure to a T. Oh, I love that. not that good of a movie, but it is real I have so much nostalgia for that movie. Oh, it's it's a terrible movie, but I'm not guilty it about it. It is horrible, but yeah. I love it. <laughs> but I'm not guilty about it at all. I will I will shout it from the highest room tops. I love Jingle. Uh, I, I still I am still like uh Arnold. Um <laughs> Arnold, what do you do? Such a such a nineties Arnold movie. Like, you know, that came out at the same time as like uh uh, what would be a good point of comparison? Put that cookie down. Put that cookie down! Uh, Fuck. I mean, it, it kind of reminds me of, like, a of like Commando without action scenes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it's like he's playing this quintessential American, but he's got this thick-ass accent. That movie is, is so 90s. It's like the father oh. who works too much, and his son is mad because he never shows up to any of his functions. Me, me, me. But- Turbo Man... Turbo Man is such a 90s idea. It, it, it's clearly making fun of Power Rangers. Oh, yeah. It's like this weird, like, Captain America Power Rangers mix or something. It's weird. I mean, I'd say it's a lot more Power Rangers because it's shot in live action. They've got these over-the-top... Yeah, it's, over-the-top it's, shot in, it's shot in the t- in the style of Power Rangers, and the bad guy's minions are just Power Rangers. There's just... That... Right. Um, and, I mean, clearly the, the villain is very Lord Lord Zed-inspired. But, uh, it, but it, it does also have sort of like an American comics sort of look to it as well. It's, it's very much a mix. Um, I mean, it, it, he, the kid is clearly a superhero fan in general because he's got the Captain America bed sheets. He's got the Wolverine. I mean, um, you, you get the idea that it's – and this happened sometimes in the 90s, unfortunately, where it was like an American company trying to make like a Japanese show. <laughs> yeah, this, this – this, I mean, was Beetleborgs a Sentai that got adapted into uh, 
that got adapted in, into a, into an American show, or was it just a straight up American show? Do you remember the Beetleborgs? I do. There, I think that one might have been completely American. I don't remember. Um, I know there's that one was horrible. <laughs> like big bad Beetleborgs. Beetleborgs is horrible. Um, don't watch fucking Beetleborgs. Don't watch Beetleborgs. You have better things. No matter who you are, you have better things to do than watch Beetleborgs. And they had the villains who were like parodies of of like classic like Universal monsters. No, they weren't the villains. They were like their fucking friends. Were they? I don't remember it all that well. I thought... They were they were on and off because they would like they would fucking attack. They would like scare the kids, but at the same time they'd be like, "Win, Beetleborgs, win!" Oh, okay. So they were like it was it's horrible. So it's like, absolutely terrible. So they were like Vulcan Skull, except one of them was a terrible looking werewolf. Oh, that's that's totally fucking accurate to say that. They they're absolutely Vulcan Skull. Um, I had a when I was young, I had a toy of that awful werewolf. Oh, did you? Who actually looked really cool in uh, t- toy form, and I could not remember what he was from until like a few years ago when I looked up. Yeah, and then you're like oh, Beetleborgs. Beetleborgs, that was a thing. Big bang. Beetleborgs. Um, oh, God, that and fucking Goosebumps. Oh. Yeah, it says it's an American television series. It is, okay. Produced by Saban. So then, well, I might take footage from Japanese shows to see if it does. Because it looks like it does. Okay, yeah, it, it was. It was. Okay, it, it was. Um, adapt- it, it seems to take less, though, because they have the kids to turn into the Beetleborgs. It, it did adapt some footage, okay. Well, I know there was one that was. <sighs> Andre showed it to me one time, and I don't remember what it's called, but it's it was made in America and it looked terrible. But it was Power Rangers esque, right? Yeah, it was Power Rangers esque, and it was made in America with no with no adapted footage. They tried to do the whole thing by themselves. I mean, it's season three of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers is basically that, except for the Zord footage. I mean, it's like you can't, but without any footage or anything, you can't. Americans cannot make a show like Japanese people do. It's just. It's, do you remember? Um, it's it's a thing. It's um, it's basically it goes back to psychology. A, yeah. An American brain, an American brain just does not work the same way a Japanese brain works. Well, look, look at like, look at every attempt to make a fucking American rip off of Godzilla before like something, something that was like, in, like something that was paying tribute to it, like Pacific Rim. I mean, the American Godzilla being one of them. Um, fucking Reptar. <laughs> what? Reptar. Reptar was a parody. Though. That's the, Reptar was awesome. Um, I actually think that the people that made Rugrats might have been Canadian though. So. They were definitely Canadian because it was Nickelodeon. Early Nickelodeon was all Canadian. Was it? Fucking Canada for Canadians, eh? Fucking Canada. Red, white, and never blue. Canada AOC now Moosla has to team up with Reptar. Oh, absolutely. You know what? That's a character who we definitely would not get sued for either. <laughs> Who's going to sue us? The Rugrats people. <laughs> <laughs> Your show isn't even on the air anymore. Mm. All Grown Up isn't even on the air anymore. <laughs> because it fucking sucked. <laughs> it was pretty bad. Um, <laughs> I'm so scared of the Rugrats people. <laughs> no, we could still get sued. I mean, they still make merchandise of it, I think. Do they really? Yeah, I'm, I guarantee somewhere out there you can get new Rugrats merchandise, or at least relatively new. I feel like if I was to go up to one of my little cousins and be like, "Hey, you ever seen the Rugrats?" They would probably look at me and be like, "What's a Rugrats?" I don't. I don't think they would. I think. Th- I think they would probably know what it is because you have um, Nickelodeon still runs it in the morning. I felt so fucking old one time because my little cousin looked up at me and said, "What's the Flintstones?" I was like, "My God!" Oh God, no, they didn't. I was like, "Child, why?" They didn't even know them from like the vitamins. Um, I think I explained to them that it was from the vitamins, and then I think they were like, oh, but still, they should have known something. Right. I mean, the Flintstones is a classic. Um, the movie came out in the 90s. That wasn't that long ago. Yeah. It had. A- oh, yeah, John Goodman is Fred. I-, I actually enjoyed that movie as a kid. It's much better than the sequel. Um. Oh, with the fucking king from Game of Thrones as Fred, yeah. And they, didn't they try to do the Great Kazoo in the sequel? And it just failed. They sure did. I think um I, if I don't if I remember it correctly I believe fucking oh what's his name Rowan Atkinson I think was Greg Gazoo I think if I'm not mistaken I'm gonna look it up real quick I remember Rowan Atkinson being in one of those movies because I have very vague memories of seeing that movie in the theaters um as, as do I as do I I have this very vivid shot of them in the pterodactyl plane in my eye 
in my mind's eye. Mm-hmm. But that's about it. Flintstones, Viva, Rock, Vegas. I mean... The, oh, it wasn't even a sequel. It was a prequel. The first, Not that it mattered, but... <laughs> the first one was just decent enough to squeak by with some of the problems it had, I felt. Um, so when they, it's enjoyable. So when, you find, so when you look back and they had a sequel, I'm like, no, don't push it. Don't, don't try to make another one. Um, oh, it was definitely not Rowan Atkinson. Who the fuck is that creature? I'm going to look at the IMDb page. Who was in it, aside from that guy? John Goodman was in it. Uh, no, he wasn't. Oh, wait, did they recast him in that movie? Yeah, Mark Addy was, was Fred Flintstone, the guy who, that came from Game of Thrones. He was in Still Standing. See, I, I didn't remember that they had recast. Because oh, one of the Baldwin boys was fucking Barney Rubble. Again, my memories of this are very, very vague. Um, oh, my God. Alan Cumming was the great kazoo. That that almost makes it worth it. <laughs> they replaced Rick Moranis with Stephen Baldwin. Yeah, apparently they did. I remember him being like high in the movie. He doesn't even look like Barney. <laughs> Flintstones, Viva, Rock, Vegas. Like the rest of them at least look like the character they're playing. He just has this terrible wig. Um... He doesn't even. He really doesn't even look like Barney. Like Mark Addy was a decent Fred Flintstone. He looks like a young Fred Flintstone. Yeah, he looks like a young John Goodman. I can buy that, but he does not look anything like Rick Moranis. <laughs> no, not at all. Look at the um, look at the little baby Dino. Oh yeah. Wow. Back when CG would just was just that bad. Um. Yep. Well, yep. Oh. Scooby Doo won anybody. David Newman did the score. Newman. <laughs> um, wow, no wonder it's so big. This movie was made in 2000. Wow. Holy sh... When did the first one come out? I thought the first one was like 2002. No, the first one was in the 90s sometime. Um, um, <gasps> Dylan. Yeah, this movie came out... There in, this movie came out in 2000. This is like... Pre nine eleven, right here. The Flintstones, the movie was ninety four. Oh yay! The same year I was born. Aren't I proud? Same year. What the? F- I didn't know it was that old. Aren't I proud? <laughs> <laughs> there are so many movies. Godzilla, Godzilla versus Space Godzilla, and the Flintstones. What a great year I was born in. At least we have Forrest Gump. Oh, that's true. We have Forrest Gump. That's enough. I guess, um, Oscar-winning film versus Godzilla versus Space Godzilla and the Flintstones movie. Um, yeah. Dylan, this was all to get to a point. Um, this was all to get to a point. What was the point we were trying to get to? We, we were Rankin talking about... Rankin-Bass. Yes, Rankin-Bass. Grew up on some Rankin-Bass. Ooh, The Mask was 94, too. Um, that's true. So now it's two for two. That's good. Um, yep. Love me some Rankin-Bass. Um... Yeah. <laughs> Surely for nostalgia. <laughs> oh, oh, totally. Like they're all horrible movies, but they're all so much fucking fun. The three I have, uh, the three I have the most nostalgia for, is uh, Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. Of course, everybody has nostalgia for that. Santa Claus is coming to town. Of course. And then the third one, which I actually legitimately like, not just for nostalgia's sake, uh, the year without a Santa Claus. That movie is fucked up because. Wait, now let me let me ask you this. Is Santa cuz I I was listening to a pod like a Kevin Smith podcast recently and um they they said this and I thought I didn't remember this correctly. Is Santa like mentally ill in that or is he physically ill? I think you're supposed to I think he's supposed to have like a cold. But I I thought he gets over that like fairly early on and the rest of it is like I don't want to do it anymore. Oh yeah, he gets over the the he's getting over the cold, but there's also this whole thing. He has a cold, but at the same time, there's also this problem of because I'm I'm sure that all the years he's been doing this, Santa Claus has had a cold on Christmas before. There's also this thing that he doesn't feel like the kids of the world care about Christmas anymore, and that's oh, that's right, yeah. He's just basically using the cold as an excuse to not do anything anymore. I mean, ever there's only one thing that everybody remembers that movie for. Yeah. 
Nah, 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 yeah, the nah. Miser Brothers. I love the Miser Brothers. You, you know, a few years ago, oh, I can't believe I remember this. This was terrible. In two what? in two thousand six, they made a made for TV. Another they they remade Year Without a Santa Claus. Oh, they, yes, they did. They sure as fuck did. And it was live action. Yeah, they was, sure as fuck did. It was fucking terrible. Uh, yeah, I never saw it, but I heard it was awful. Oh, I saw like five minutes of it. I said, no Wasn't more. Wasn't John Goodman Santa in that? <sighs> um, he might have been. I'm looking at images. I can't quite tell with the beard. <laughs> but I mean. Because I mean, we were just talking about John Goodman being Fred Flintstone. I remember him being Santa. I just, I hated it. Ah, it was fucking terrible. The original is probably my favorite of those puppet movies, just because, again, I, I enjoy it for more than just the nostalgia alone. Um,. Oh, I, I would say mine is Year Without Santa Claus. I mean, no, uh, no, um, I'm sorry. That's the same exact one as you. Santa Claus is coming to town. Mm. Yeah, that one. That one's second. The one that's purely nostalgia is Rudolph. Um, oh, Rudolph. I mean, we did it on Geeky Gentleman last year. It does not hold up at all. It is so bad. Oh, yes, John Goodman is Santa Claus. <sighs> that's fucking awesome. Um, That's a really good idea. Um, Chris Kattan is in this movie. Who did he play? Somebody named Sparky. Who the hell is Sparky? That's uh, one of the elves, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, uh, the other ones that I remember seeing were... Uh, and see, the stuff that came out after Year Without a Santa Claus, don't really care for it, like Baby New Year and all that shit. Oh, the Rudolph sequels, yeah. There yeah, was a bunch of Rudolph sequels. But like Christmas in July, uh, I despise... I, oh, I remember that one. I really don't like any of those. <laughs> I mean, they're. I mean, Dylan. None of them are objectively good, but like you remember them for the nostalgia, like uh, Rudolph and Frosty. I remember seeing the one that gave like Rudolph like this superhero power, where apparently the shiny nose comes from this mystical snowflake. Yes. On his. Sorry, dude. Oh, that, that's good right there. Um. So, you, Rudolph, Frosty, New Year. Um. Wait, hang on. Rudolph's Rudolph and Frosty's Christmas in July. That was that was a fucked up title. Um, that was the one where they went to the circus. Yeah. And you had Frosty and Rudolph doing, like, circus shows. When I was younger, they, um, somebody made an animated version of Rudolph. And I used to have it on, like, I used to have it on, like, I used to have it on, like, a VHS where, like, Rudolph had this terrible hair. Um. It was so 90s. It was terrible. (laughs) It was bad. Um, it was even worse than the original. Just objectively. It had a villain and in it. Stuff. It had a villain in it, like this bitch that like froze stuff. It was Yeah, the Ice Queen. Yeah. Wasn't she obscenely fat? Uh, I think Because so. I have this memory of her looking like fucking uh, Ursula from The Little Mermaid. Hmm. Yeah. Hold on. I'm going to the IMDB page. Um, I remember there was a bear in it. Yes, and, she's fat. Uh, yeah, and Rudolph has a uh, a friend who's a polar bear wearing a winter hat. Yeah. Rudolph's got blonde hair for some reason. Yeah, apparently that's a thing in the in the in the reindeer. There's also this this fucked up little squirrel thing. Is it a squirrel? I always thought it was a fox. It's it. See, that's the thing. It looks like a fox in the face, but at the same time, it looks too small to be a fox. So I was always like, is it a fox or is it a squirrel? I mean, it's probably an art fox. Is what it probably is. It's a squirrel fox. <laughs> yes, it's a squirrel fox, Dylan. No, it's probably an Arctic fox. Probably. Because that's an actual thing, and they're at least somebody somewhat borrowing from reality. I can um, explain why he's white, because he's one of the, that's one of those species that like shed their fur and grow white fur for winter, aren't they? Yeah, like the Yeti. Um, or like, like the Yeti. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say like the Arctic hare, but okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll take Oh, remember a, a, a Bumble from the fucking... Uh... Original Rudolph. I do remember the bumble. Whenever I see an abominable snowman, I don't call it an abominable snowman. <laughs> Whenever you see an abominable snowman. You know, I'm just out in my backyard and look off into the woods and I just see myself a wonderful abominable snowman. Not in person, Bill. Like in a store or something. like that. Oh, oh, in a store? Hey, shopping for... Go into the abominable snowman store. Yetis have to buy groceries too, Bill. No. <laughs> oh, no, I imagine it being like, it'd be in like a pet store. Whenever I see an image... Like behind like the adopt a Yeti. Whenever I see an image or an effigy of an abominable... An effigy? Of an abominable snowman. 
I usually call I will oftentimes call it a bumble just because it's a lot faster, <laughs> just because it's a lot faster than saying abominable snowman. I just call them yetis. Um, I know for years when I watched um, Empire Strikes Back, I would refer to the wampa as a bumble. <laughs> that's so fucking info. Oh my god, that's funny. Um, the wampa was fucking terrifying. Yeah. Um, unlike Bumble. Um, I though I do remember being afraid of the Bumble as a child. I, I think the reason was because when when they first show it, they show it as like this close up. You know when, where they? You know, the, isn't there a shot where they like just show like its foot? Yeah, and it's like this monstrously huge, like hairy leg. Yeah, it looks way bigger than when you they finally run into the full creature. This thing looks like Godzilla sized when you see that foot. Uh, yeah, which is and, and then they a, cut to it. Like, which, yeah, which is why as a child I was both terrified and also amazed by it. <laughs> yeah, it's like that's not physically possible. Um, and then they pass the reindeer, and then later on you see it come over the mountain. And it's like this is not uh, this is not the same creature. I got I gotta say, um, not a great movie, but Yukon Cornelius is a badass. Oh, fucking Yukon! Love Yukon Cornelius. I love Yukon. Gold. I want a movie all about Yukon. Yukon's origin. I would love a movie about Yukon Cornelius, in which oh, Con Cornelius God. is played by fucking Chuck Norris. No, no, no. He's not charismatic. <laughs> no. Um, who could play you? Who could play Yukon Cornelius? Um. Uh, who could play Yukon? Um. So I want a movie about Yukon Cornelius and his pet Bumble kicking ass. <laughs> yes. Um. Even though he pulled all of its he pulled all of its teeth, so he'd have to like. That was that was disturbing. <laughs> How did you take down the creature, Herbie? I cut out all of its teeth. Oh, well, That's terrifying. Yukon Cornelius. What about the uh, what about the uh, the claws? Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. Happy holidays from Yukon Cornelius and the Bumble. Oh, I want to see this movie happen. Yes. I love how the the hell of how the Bumble is like fucking pouring blood from its mouth. You Yukon Cornelius, fucking badass man. He's a badass. Um. Who could play Yukon Cornelius? There aren't many Rankin Bass characters that I look at and say, fucking badass, but... Um, oh, oh, William Hurt that, would be an amazing Yukon Cornelius. In fact, there are probably only three characters that I look at uh, um, and say, fucking badass from Rankin Bass, and that's the Miser Brothers and Yukon Cornelius. Yukon Cornelius, the mailman from Santa Claus is Coming to Town. Oh, yeah, yeah, the one that looks like Dick Van Dyke. Yeah, the guy who looks like Dick Van Dyke, and... um. He also doesn't. Isn't he in a couple of those specials? That guy, that character. I think they brought him back. Um, yeah, and in like a, in like the Avengers of Rick and Bass. I think they brought. Yeah. Um, if he came back, <laughs> if he came back, it was in like one of the um, one of those ones that I don't care for. <laughs> it's weird <clears throat> because they got slowly more religious as they went on. Like the early ones, there's really not even like a mention of religion. It's more just about, like, the pagan rituals of Christmas. Um, and then you get to, like, Nestor the Long-Eared Donkey, and they directly mention Jesus several times. Nestor the Long-Eared Donkey. It's, it's, it, it's a direct rip-off of fucking um, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, but with Jesus in it. Okay, yes, they did bring back the, that mailman, and I, um, because I'm looking at an image of him right now, but I'm not sure what movie it was in, but he looks terrible. They didn't use the same puppet. I guess they didn't have it anymore because Santa Claus is Coming to Town was one of the earlier ones that they did. So I guess they had yeah. to make another puppet, and it looks awful. I mean, I will protest that uh, Santa Claus is Coming to Town is a prequel to the Year Without a Santa Claus because they're played by the same actor. Yeah, and even though he doesn't look that way, I always imagined it to be sort of a prequel to Rudolph too. even though the Santa Claus is completely different. That's really the only big, like, continuity error. <laughs> Santa is a terrible person in the original Rudolph. He's a horrible human being. He enslaves people. He lets his deer get attacked by monsters. And he just endorses terrible things. He endorses, like, slavery and 
Harsh Labor. What the hell? Apparently there's a movie called from 1977. Why have I never heard of this? I probably know why I've never heard of this because it's terrible. It's called The Easter Bunny is Coming to Town. I have seen it! And the mailman from Santa Claus is coming to town is in it and he's a train conductor. Oh, he sh- Dylan, that's the movie. I've seen that. And the train has eyes and a mouth. I've seen it. How, that's that's the one I was thinking of. How bad is it? They have a bear in it called the Great the Great. Oh fuck, what is it called? Oh, Gad Gadzook, the bear. The Great Gadzook. No, I think he's just called Gadzook. Oh, okay. So when I was a kid, I was like Godzilla. No, Gadzook. He Gad Gadzook. That's exactly what it is. And it was this gigantic bear that tried to eat the rabbit. Um, Peter Cottontail. <laughs> Why was he trying to eat the rabbit? I don't know. I don't remember. Is this where the song Here Comes Peter Cottontail comes from? No, the song was before the movie, and the movie was based on the song. Oh, wonderful. Even better. And and the song is in the movie, of course. Here comes Peter Cottontail, how, hopping down the bunny trail. How 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 clearly, like, after the song is the movie? Because the thing about Santa Claus is Coming to Town is the story is very original. Like, they didn't have, they didn't, well, to begin with, the song didn't really have a story to it, so they had to make shit up. Um, it's it's basically Santa year one. Basically. And you have that the the, the um winter war. And it even has government corruption in it. Assuming that this is indeed a uh, yeah, prequel to Year Without a Santa Claus, where does the Winter Warlock like rank? Is he like below Snow Miser? Was Snow Miser his boss? Is that what happened? Oh yeah, totally, definitely. Where does Jack Frost fit into this universe? Jack Frost was a villain. In uh. Jack Frost was... Oh, he was a villain. Okay, you remember uh, Frosty's Winter Wonderland? Mm, kind of. He was a villain in that, I think. Ah. And then they made a movie all about Jack Frost. Uh, in uh, in the Rankin-Bass line. I know there was also one that was... Um, you were talking earlier about how they got more religious. There was a, there was a little drummer boy that Rankin-Bass did. Little, little drummer boy. There was a. Uh, this is what I remember about nuns for some reason. It was all about nuns. I seem to remember some nuns too. I don't remember why. I just remember a movie about nuns. I'm going to get an explanation for this. Rankin, just look up Rankin Bass nuns. Rankin Bass and nuns. And see what comes up. I'm, Nun, the movie. I'm frightened. <laughs> Uh, I think everybody here, I mean, everyone, everybody listening, rather, not everybody here, this, it's just me and you here. I mean, everybody listening will definitely, if they don't remember Rankin-Bass from, like, the Christmas specials, they probably remember them for uh, for uh, King Kong Escapes and the King Kong cartoon show. Maybe nuns just appeared in a movie, because when I type in Rankin-Bass nuns, I'm not getting anything, so they might... Are you telling me nothing comes up? I'm shocked. No, stuff comes up, just nothing like what I'm expecting. For some I reason... it was a short. I don't even think it was a feature. I'm getting pictures of the little drummer boy. I'm getting pictures of all these Rankin Bass movies. I'm getting. I'm even getting pictures of the Rankin Bass Hobbit for some reason. Oh my God! Yeah, everybody remembers it for that too. Um, where there's a whip, whoosh, there's a way. Yeah, and Smog. Smog looks like a cat in that movie. Is it just me? He looks kind of cat-like in his face. Wait, it wasn't the Hobbit. It was uh, Return of the King. Did they do a version of The Hobbit, too? I, I know they did one for Return of the King. Yeah, Rankin Bass did The Hobbit. Did they? Rankin Bass's version of The Hobbit is more famous than their version of Return of the King. <laughs> oh, is it? I've never heard of it. It is very much so. Send me a pic. Like, I've never actually watched the Rankin Bass um, Return of the King, but I have seen the Rankin Bass Hobbit on several occasions. Is it awful? Um... No, not really. No? Not not really. I mean, is it great? I, I don't know if I would call oh, it. Oh my god, it's the first thing that popped up. What did you put, type in rank? Oh, I have seen this. Yeah, look up look up an image of their smog. He looks very cat-like in the face. It's, it's interesting. Do you remember? Um, this has nothing to do with Christmas, but do you remember All Dogs Go to Heaven? Yes. Do you remember the sequel All Dogs Go to Heaven too? No, I didn't even know there was a sequel. There's a sequel to All Good Dogs Go to Heaven called, surprisingly enough, All Dogs Go to Heaven 2. Oh, wow. And, How original. And in the movie, they fight um, the devil. Um, 
And it's, of course they do. And of course, in this version of of the universe, the devil is naturally a cat. Oh, that makes sense. And it's hilarious. He 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 actually kind of looks like um. He doesn't look like a house cat though. He looks like a big cat, like a panther or something. I I'm gonna find an image. Oh, Smog does look like a cat in this. Yes, Smog is like exactly. Smog is very cat like. Bilbo looks like a fucking... Bilbo looks like Caesar from Rise. Okay, here you go. This is the old... No! This is... Caesar is home! This is the old dogs go to heaven version of the devil. But, um... I'll tell you who looks terrible in The Hobbit. Um, in the Rankin Bass Hobbit. Aside from Bilbo? Bilbo looks terrifying. Bilbo does look bad. Their golem does... is. He's got this sort of like fishy look going on. I don't know how to explain it. He looks like a. I'm looking at him now. He looks like fucking. Um, he looks like one of the creatures from uh, Shadow over Innsmouth. Hmm. Yeah. He's very frog-like. He is. First time I saw him. He's... First time I saw him, he kind of reminded me of like, um, fucking Gorgo for some reason. Is that creature supposed to be Legolas's dad? Which one? The the fucking the creature wearing wearing like a crown of leaves. Thranduil. Could be. <laughs> Is that like a dad? Or it could just be another elf, I don't know. <laughs> it's terrifying. Yeah, he does look frog like. Um He's like a frog bat. Well now that we have the fucking Peter Jackson movies, all these other versions of the Hobbit are kinda like what? Gollum, the frog bat. <laughs> yes, indeed. I believe coming to the local theater near you. Can you believe that he was once a hobbit? <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> no. Wait, was Gollum a hobbit? Gollum was a hobbit. Oh, I thought he was like a dude. So he was like he was a hobbit in. I don't know if that's how. It's... Well, there's kind of like it's weird. He's supposed to be some sort of thing. If I'm remembering correctly, he's supposed to be some sort of thing. Not quite. Hobbit. He's not like the hobbits that are in the Shire. He he's some sort of thing that's related to them. Does that make sense? Um, like a dwarf? No, not a dwarf. And he, I don't know what he is. <laughs> Point is, he. How could they do Return of the King but not Two Towers and uh, and Fellowship? Well, there was a um, before the Rankin Bass did Return of the King. There was a uh, an animated movie. I'm not sure if Rankin Bass did it or not. But that was just called Lord of the Rings. And it, no, it was Ralph Bakshi. Yeah. Hmm. So no, it wasn't them. So maybe they maybe they did it only because there wasn't. Um, maybe they're like, hey, uh, back she already did um, the other two, so we're just gonna skip right to Return of the King. Maybe I heard that was awful. Um, and we're gonna draw it like this. Yeah, pretty much. We're gonna draw it like we drew the Hobbit. No problem there, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, Gollum looks the same. Yep. Um. And Smog's a cat. Yep, Smog's a cat. And I'm looking at an image of somebody who I guess is supposed to be one of Sauron's soldiers, and he looks like Hordak. He does. Um, yeah, the Jackson movies are better. Um, <laughs> Jackson movies are way better. <laughs> yeah. um, do, do, we, do we even have to say that? <laughs> I doubt it, but God forbid, you never know. There might be some weirdo out there who's like, hey, you know what's a really shitty movie? Return of the King. Um, you know what's a way better movie? Rankin Bass the Hobbit. Yes. <laughs> With their... The Ralph Bakshi Lord of the Rings is actually pretty good. I tried to watch it once. I actually couldn't make it through it. Was it that... What, you thought it was that bad? I think it's I think it's because I was so familiar with the Peter Jackson thing that it was just so very... It was very jarring to try and watch that version. I don't know. Fair enough. It's not a great movie, but it's fine. Um, it's a fine movie. It's a fine ass movie. It's a fine film. They did a uh, Rankin Bass did an alternative version of Santa Claus's origin, and I'm tr- it was very different. Like there was no magic elements to it. It was fucking weird. I'm gonna try and find it. Damn, Lord of the Rings, you were fine. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Dude. Last night Dylan and I were on the phone talking about an incident we will not talk about here, um, and. We started talking about, like, this Christmas special, and we started talking about Christmas like it was a fucking woman. 
Like, yo, Christmas, you come over here, baby, you fine. <laughs> like, damn, Christmas, you looking good. Christmas is rocking it, baby. Woo. Um. I'm trying to find a list of the fucking, um. Of. Here we go. Christmas specials. Full list of ranking best Christmas specials. We don't have reindeer. Cricket on the hearth. Frosty. Frosty the Snowman was the original one was Rankin Bass. I didn't know that. Yeah, they produced it. It was just animated as opposed to um, puppet, which I guess technic oh. which I guess technically is animation, <laughs> just a different kind of animation. The first Christmas, the story of the first Christmas snow. In God's name is it? Is this? It's the origin story of Snow Miser. This is the movie with the nuns. This is the movie with the nuns. Yep, this is the movie with the nuns. So was Santa Claus raised by nuns instead of elves in that version? No, it's not Santa. It's some blind kid named Lucas. Ah, uh, because clearly the story of some blind ki kid named Lucas is the essential tale to be told when it comes to Christmas. Yep. Because when I think Christmas, the first person that pops into my mind is some blind kid named Lucas. <laughs> Definitely. Frosty's Winter Wonderland, Rudolph's Shiny New Year... The Little Drummer Boy Book 2? What? Did you know that in Italy, Santa Claus has a donkey? Nesta the donkey. Was that his name? Yeah. Yeah. All I remember is that he was the... Oh, it was, yeah, it was Nestor. All I remember was that he was the Italian Christmas donkey. Yep, he was the Italian Christmas donkey. Uh, uh, those Italians and their donkeys. Oh. Yep. Yeah, there was a sequel to The Little Drummer Boy. Called what? The Little Drummer Boy Drums Again? <laughs> the Little Drummer Boy, book two. It's very straightforward. The Little, the little Drummer Roll. Was, was it like a direct sequel, or did they just fucking... It's a story about after, you know, uh, playing for Jesus, The Little Drummer Boy obviously was very famous, and so he went around... The special, the, yeah, the special picks up where The Little Drummer Boy left off at the little stable in Bethlehem shortly after the birth of Jesus. Mel Melchior, one of the three kings from the first movie, invites Aaron to travel with him in order to suck his dick. Wow. Um, he goes around, you know, drumming with ACDC for a while, and then, you know, at some point, you know, he just winds up, you know, doing backup like snare drum on the, the David Letterman show. And uh, and, then he got, and then he developed a wicked coke habit. Oh, it's bad. Terrible, 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 terrible. Uh, it's, it's all in Behind the Music, Little Drummer Boy. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you've seen it. They made a parody of it called. Uh, they, they made a parody called Symbol uh, Smash. Yes, yes. It, it's soon to be adapted into a movie called. Yeah, it was a play. Yeah. Called Pumpa Pum Pum, I believe. Um, Pumpa Pum Pum. Yeah, it's gonna be great. I mean, I'm I'm gonna see it I in am, 3D. In 3D, nonetheless. I'm excited for Pumpa Pum Pum. I think Pumpa Pum Pum is my um my number one most anticipated movie of 2014. I mean. I would agree. I mean, it's even more. It looks even better than Godzilla. I mean, I'll go that far. I can't think of anything uh, that you know out does Pumpa Pum Pum. You know, Godzilla, Robocop, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. <laughs> I mean that fucking trailer, dude. Is so good. I mean, you just see the drummer boy there drumming. Yeah, I know. Snorting snort coke off bitches' ass. It's fucking. It's real, man. It's real shit. Red Foreman tells the bitches to leave. It's. Yep, it's fucked up. And sad when Pumpa Pum Pum is truer to RoboCop than the RoboCop remake. Yep. Yep. Can't wait for Pumpa Pum Pum. Yeah, me too. <laughs> the stingiest man in town. The Stingiest Man in Town. That's apparently a movie. The Stingiest Man in Town. The stingiest. 1978. This sounds horrifying. It is an animated version of the 1956 Alcoa Hour special based on A Christmas Carol. It's a version of The Christmas Carol? Apparently. Um. Oh, The Stingiest Man in That makes sense. Oh... We're thinking of a different definition for stingy. <laughs> Indeed. Walter Matthau was Ebenezer Scrooge. Scrooge, not Scrooge. <laughs> Ebenezer Scrooge. That sounds like the, the character's name from the Christmas Carol porno spoof. <laughs> oh, God! My name we is... We need to use that. My name is Ebenezer, Ebenezer Scrooge. Scrooge. <laughs> no, it sounds like an action movie. Ebenezer Scrooge. 
Walter Matthau was Scrooge. I'm reminded of Tom Bosley was the fucking narrating insect. I'm rem- <laughs> narrating insect. I wish all narrators were. And you know, you know what the you know what the insect's name is? What? Bah humbug. Wonderful. Right. I wish all narrators were billed as the narrating insect. Yes. Today we will. Our narrating insect is Morgan Freeman. Yes. Hello, everybody. My name is Morgan Freebug. Then Ebenezer Screws went to her house. It's a cartoon. Um. Oh, here we go. The Life of and Adventures of Santa Claus. 1985. It. Life and Adventures of Santa Claus. Hang on, my phone just crashed. Oh, it's an ad. Never mind. Life and Adventures of Santa Claus. I remember this vaguely from a ch- from childhood. 1985 Christmas television special produced in stop motion. It is based on li- The Life and Adventures of Santa Claus, a 1902 children's book by L. Frank Baum, who is the name I don't know. You don't know who L. Frank Baum is? No, what do you write? Uh, Aside from The Life and Adventures of Santa Claus. God, hold on. If you hadn't asked me, I would know. <laughs> <laughs> that's That's... All right. Um, One of the big names in in children book writing. He wrote um, Jesus, why can't I? I think he wrote Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Um, no, that was Roald Dahl. Yeah, that was Roald Dahl. Hey, no, he wrote um. Who wrote You Only Live Twice, the movie? He wrote Wizard of Oz. Of course he did. Yeah, L. Frank. Oh, are you shitting me? No, yeah, L. Frank Baum wrote Wizard of Oz. See, I always get him and Roald Dahl mixed up at first. He 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 wrote uh, Wizard of Oz. Right. He did not write You Only Live Twice. No, he's the guy that came out with Oz. Isn't that so fucked up, though, that fucking Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, factory guy wrote You Only Live Twice? I know. So yeah, L. Frank Baum, he's like the J.R.R. Tolkien of Oz, basically. Pretty much. Um, a council meeting is held where the Ock, I don't know who those are, tell the story of Santa Claus. It happened many years ago when the Great Ock... What? It looks like the Great Ock is like all these mystical fucking godlike beings... Who talk about Santa? Because why not? Um, Crap, I think I remember this. It happened many years ago when a, when orphan baby. Apparently, there are two versions of this movie. There's an animated one, which I seem to remember, and then there's a puppet one. Well, the puppet one is the one I'm looking at. Hmm. There was an animated one. I'm seeing images of one on Google Images, and I seem to remember it. I think they ran it on Cartoon Network once when I was young. Really? That's weird. Um, Simba, get off my computer. What are you doing? Um, the council meeting is held with the Ock tell the story of Santa. This is a fucked up wor- version of Santa Claus. Um, oh my god, there's this one guy I'm, uh, I'm imagining. He's part of the Ock. He's like, he looks like Gandalf, but he's wearing like moose horns. Yeah, I'm looking at that, yeah. I'm looking at that, yeah, that's fucking weird. She names the boy Klaus... When Klaus became a man, he learned that he must live with other mortals. Wait, Santa's a mortal? I guess that makes sense. This was before Klaus signed up for the SS. <laughs> Apparently Santa in this version is like fucking Hercules. He's like half god, half man. Why not? Because why not? When Klaus became a man, he learned that he must live with other mortals. So Klaus set up a workshop. He makes toys. Um, one day he was delivering toys when he was attacked by some villains. As as you do when you deliver toys. Um, Very descriptive. Yeah, attacked by villains. Claus ends up getting... He was attacked by the Legion back. of Doom. He was attacked by the Legion of Easter. Um, the Legion of when, Minor Inconveniences. Yeah, this is like... I said this is like a realistic version. This one's even more fucking fantastic than the fucking original one. <laughs> Where Santa's like half god and shit. Yeah. Apparently, though... Apparently. Apparently. This is kind of like that episode of Batman TAS called POV. Where they can't get the story straight. Of course. And they have to tell each other the same... Like, each have to tell their own version of the story. So they always they often have to tell their own almost caught him Santa Claus story. Right, exactly. I threw a rock at him. 
<laughs> it was a big rock. You get like the Grinch and Ebenezer Scrooge and like. Yeah, it's all the Christmas icons. They're the villains who attacked him at the beginning. Yeah. And then they try to tell the story of, of uh, Santa Claus to, to repent. They get to the Bumble, and the Bumble's just like, I threw a rock at him. <laughs> it was a big rock. Yukon Cornelius is there. Yes. Gold! Wow, uh, Yukon, that has nothing to do with what we're talking about. But I'm obsessed with gold! The Miser Brothers are fighting in the corner. Yeah, it was pretty fucked up. Um, All those Christmas villains hanging out at their seedy little Christmas villain bar. The Pinocchio Christmas? What? That's a fucking Rankin-Bass movie. Pinocchio's Christmas. See, Rankin-Bass made a lot of these, but everybody remembers like five. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, because they're so fucking weird. Yeah, the five that people remember are weird, but they're the most normal. (laughs) Yeah. Like, and know, then you have oh like, this you know, one I remember being you know the what? part you know the part in Santa Claus is going to town when the school teacher is singing the song and she just starts like tripping balls <laughs> yes yes I do remember that reminds me of the song sequence from the Dead Zone <laughs> yeah yes oh it does the Leprechaun's Christmas Gold that's a Rankin Bass movie what did they just feel the need to turn one of these out every year apparently I, and I remember this there's a fucking evil leprechaun that horrified me as a child are you sure that wasn't just the movie leprechaun no this is he's called old mag the hag who was this gigantic horrifying leprechaun who horrified me when I was a child Apparently, it's on DVD, because who doesn't want to own the Leprechaun's Christmas Gold? Right? I didn't, wow, I, I remember watching part of this as a kid. Wow. That's fucked up. Um, well, that's something else. So, rank and pass. Uh, we, uh, yeah, rank and pass. Huh? At, oh, my God, apparently the Pope is in the Leprechaun's Christmas Gold. Are you shitting me? I'm looking at a picture that looks like a puppet Pope. Um, a pope if you will. <laughs> Clever. Except it, maybe he's not the Pope because his staff has like a four leaf cl- clover, but he's wearing like a Pope hat. But the Pope hat also has a four leaf clover on it. Maybe he's supposed to be something else. Who knows? Oh, he's Saint Patrick. Oh, that actually makes sense. Um, he's Saint Patrick. That's why he's dressed like a leprechaun Pope, a popercon, if you will. A popercon, <laughs> if you will. Um, yeah. Rankin Bass is weird. Ah, Jesus, Rankin Bass. They've got a more complicated deity structure than the Marvel universe. <laughs> right? Right? Like, who the fuck is their deity? I guess that's Mother Earth from uh, uh, Year Without a Santa Claus. But there's the Great Ock in in uh, the life and the life and adventures of Santa Claus. Right? Isn't Father Time in one of them too? He's in the baby. Oh yeah, he's in. A, he's a giant whale. Obviously. Oh, no, that's Big Ben. Father Time is in, uh... Yeah, he, Father Time is... He was in, uh... He was in, uh, Rudolph's Chinese New Year. Yeah, obviously he must be the god, because, you know, he's fucking time. Um... Yeah, but then you've got the great Ock, who's, like, the god of all gods. But he cannot contend with Father Time. <laughs> Fair enough. Um... You just have this big holy war between the followers of the great Ock and the followers of Father Time. Yeah. There's apparently a uh, Father, a Doctor Who... Father Time has this one, like, tuft of red hair at the top of his head, and it always looks to me like he's, he's bleeding. <laughs> looks like There's also uh, Big Ben, the giant sperm whale, with a clock in his tail. Because why not? From uh, Rudolph Shiny New Year. Because why not? Yeah, indeed. Um, there was a... Uh, they made a recent, like, CGI musical version of fucking... It was a sequel to uh, Year Without a Santa Claus, all about the Miser Brothers. In which they had to run Santa's workshop for, like, a whole day, and it was horrible. I remember this. This was this was terrible. I remember watching it. I, mean, I remember watching it just because it was like, damn it, I'm a Miser Brothers fan. <laughs> I mean, I, I watched it because it was literally the time in my life where I would just watch something just out of boredom. I don't do that anymore because I actually have a life. Um... <laughs> Just be like, eh, this is on. 
now we Whatever. record things out of boredom. Yeah, it's true. It's way better. <laughs> That's what we do now. Um. Uh, yeah. So, uh, Dylan, anything else you want to bring up about Christmas? Mm, have we covered the gambit on Christmas movies? I think we have. Um, we spent most of the time talking about Rankin Bass. I can't think of any thing else. Yeah, I mean, I think I think, uh, I think we kind of covered the gambit here. Uh, we've been going on for about two hours. I think that's gonna be enough um, right. for the Christmas special slash um, slash follow up on Blackfish. <laughs> yeah, uh, that was a good episode. Dude. It was good. Um, so Dylan, Merry Christmas and a Merry Christmas to you as well. Thank you, sir. Um. And I think that's going to do it for the demons from outer space. Motherfucking Christmas. I'm Bill Worcester. And I'm Super DM64. Thank you very much for watching. And have a very Merry Christmas and an extremely happy New Year. And enjoy Time of the Doctor. Enjoy it. <laughs>